Hi everybody. In this free render video, we're going to take a look uh, using iMesh assets within D5 Render. We look at what iMesh is, why I think they're a really good choice to use for supplementary assets, and I'll show you how easy it is to get your assets from iMesh into Blender and then into D5 Render. We'll also mention some of the potential issues you might encounter and just a few quick workarounds. All in all, though, I think iMesh assets are really some of the best that are commercially available. And I think they're worth taking a look. Oftentimes, they do some really great seasonal discounts and sales. And um, overall, I think the quality is just really, really high. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So first question is, what is iMesh? Well, iMesh is a company that sells really high quality digital assets, primarily for use in Blender. But as we'll see in a second, it's pretty easy to get them out of Blender and straight into D5 Render. You can see here, they produce quite a wide variety of assets and they're all of a really stunning high quality. My understanding is the intention here is to produce really production ready assets that you can just drag into your blender scenes and they're pretty much ready to go. They're beautifully modeled. They're all modeled correctly using mostly quads and they're beautifully textured. In fact, the texturing is absolutely stellar. I mean, they're just, the stuff is really, really great. Now, if you need some more convincing, you can see there's a tab on their page where you can go take a look and see some of their different stuff, their objects, their food, and now they're even doing these large, really impressive scenes, usually for Blender 4, versions of Blender 4 onwards, but really fantastic stuff. For about $75 a year, if you get it on sale, and you can see it's on sale for about 11 days at the moment, and they do regularly do pretty good seasonal sales, but for about $75 or 145 normally, you're getting access to basically tons and tons of assets. As I said, the models are incredibly high quality. Let's just take a quick look here at some of the things. We've got access to architectural models. We've also got, this is gonna be windows and doors and wonderful things like that. But for me, the real key is gonna be the decoration models. Now, D5 does come with an amazing selection of decorative objects, but you can honestly really just can't ever have enough of them. And these decorative objects are of incredibly high quality. They're incredibly well textured. They're quite simply very beautiful. And in fact, you know, if you're only going to be sort of purchasing, I think one additional asset library, it's really a toss up probably between iMesh and Polygon. And I just like iMesh a lot more. Now, that's just my personal experience so far. But the assets are just beautiful. I mean, you can see the quality here. So let's see, how do we get this stuff into D5 Render? All right, so let's bounce over to Blender really quickly. And I do want to mention, in order to get the best out of this, you are going to need the D5 Sync for Blender. Now, this is available through the D5 website. And you do want to be using the most up-to-date and current version. And you can see the supported versions for Blender are all the way from 2.9 long-term support, LTS, all the way up to 4.1. Before it mounts into Blender, I just wanted to show you this quick scene that I made in D5 Render to show off some of these really wonderful assets. And you can see we've got a simple hallway and we're going into a bathroom. Uh, bathrooms are like my least favorite thing ever next to kitchens to work on. But just some of these models are just absolutely beautiful. This is a really, really gorgeous mirror from the D5, from, I'm sorry, iMesh's asset library. And then if we go into the actual bathroom here, all of these decorative elements are all coming from iMesh. So you can see this absolutely stunning, just decorative work here. This is a glass object with caustics turned on within D5 Render, but everything from the faucet to the really stunning mirror, and probably my favorite thing in the scene is these really gorgeous lights. And I'm just going to put on a light up here just so you can kind of see. They're absolutely just stunningly beautifully well made. And then we've also got some really nice decorative stuff as well. And like I said, one of the strengths for artificial rendering, I think with iMesh, is those decorative assets because honestly you can never have enough and a lot of times uh you know users are going to end up just using the same looking d5 asset library which is fine but over time all of your scenes just kind of the same objects the same stuff that's just great to have access to some really stunning variation so here we are in blender 
Now, please note, if you have access to iMesh, either through the free account or one of the subscriptions, you will come with this iMesh panel. This is a asset library sort of organizer that you can download. They've got videos on YouTube showing how to install it, but it's actually really, really handy. It's just going to sit right up here. And you can see I've got an iMesh view panel and I've got all my different assets in different tabs. So I'm going to go ahead and download just a decorative one. So under the decorations tab. Now my version is slightly different because there's a lot of folders that come with the iMesh sort of asset panel. And I, I'm very simplistic, so I just kind of like basified it a little bit. But you can see here, we've got some really, really stunning assets that I've already downloaded. And to get them into your scene, it's as simple as just picking whatever it is you actually want to work with. So for example, I'm just going to download, let's grab this little, this guy, let's just do this thing right here. I love this thing. And then I'm just going to hit append and there we go. This will bring this directly into your Blender scene. And if you're a habitual Blender user, this will be familiar with you. You can kind of see that it's set in their own little asset folder over here, but the object themselves are readily available to be able to grab and just move them around. Now, in order to see them in Blender, you will actually have to put on the sort of real-time preview version mode within Blender. Uh, and you can see just how beautiful these assets look. And generally, they translate very well to D5. How do I get this into D5? Well, it's actually really, really easy. I'm going to left-click, drag a selection over the whole thing. I'm going to go down to the D5 converter button right over here. And we're going to just send this over to D5. Now, in the previous video we did on this like a year or two ago, I did have everyone sort of, I think, recommend them that they bake their materials. Uh, honestly, that, you don't really need to do that, honestly. I think it's, you can do it for certain things, but I've actually had more success with literally just selecting the object and hitting export to D5. So I'm going to export this to D5. I'm going to pick a place to save it. So let's do that. And then we'll load it up directly within D5. So just the model as is, I've changed nothing. Export to D5. So here we are after the export. The export took about 12 to 13 seconds. And I'm pretty much ready to go. So to get this into D5, all I need to do is go up to the import tab. And you can see this is the sample file we had earlier. These are all, well, some of the assets that we had in there. And I'm going to use this one here, sample asset. And you can see it will go to the imported tab. Just click on it. And it will load and place it in the scene. Now I'm going to turn off the floor, this new terrain floor here, just so you can see. And there is our actual asset in D5. It's going to quickly change my navigation to fly, which I kind of wish was the default. And there you go. You can see just how good these assets actually look within D5. You can see the metals look like metals. Everything is looking and translating pretty nicely. Now, all in all, once you have these objects within your scene, you can see I can click on it, move it, and scale it, and do whatever I need to do with it. I can also use the eyedropper and actually hover over the specific materials themselves. And if I wanted, I could change those material properties, or I can always just hit M on my keyboard. Maybe I go to my materials, go to my favorites. And for example, if I wanted to change the entire look and feel of this, grab the black metal and just apply it maybe to the different parts. And you can see anything that has its own unique material, in other words, anything within these assets that has its own standard material or uh, basically its blender material, it should transfer that information over within reason and you'll be able to identify it and maybe just make changes to them. So you can see I can hover over this and it recognizes the disparate parts of the actual model. All in all, this is really, really cool. Now, what's also really awesome about this is once you have these objects within D5, all we need to do is go to the object tab, right click, and you can see we can rename it. We can do like iMesh asset, you know, something like that, asset, if I can spell. And then right click, and just go add to local. Now, once you've done this in any future projects, all you need to do is go to assets and local. Move this here. And there we go. And this is going to be under model. And there we go. And you can see I've already got some of these other assets that I loaded up when I was working on the bathroom scene. And once you add them to local, they will stay on your C drive. 
And you can go in and just add these to any of your future D5 render scenes. Now, it's not always perfect. We mentioned at the start, we'll look at some of the potential issues. And here I've got another really amazing looking iMesh decorative thing. It's just oh, there's stuff. It's just so good. Um, you know, this is just really fantastic looking, but I've exported this out to D5. And so I'm going to go ahead and just import this here, right here. And I've got sample asset number two. I want to show you uh, some of the potential issues you might run into. So here we go. Sample asset two. There we go. All right. Sorry for the bounciness. There we go. You can see there are some things that aren't going to translate perfectly. The leather on the watch, for example, obviously looks a million gazillion times better within Blender. Now, a part of this is going to be quite simple. Uh, because these models are super highly, you know, high fidelity, the texturing is just off the chain good. In order to sort of utilize them, you have to realize that they weren't really, I think, intended for export. And exporting them with the export to D5 button works really well, but it doesn't necessarily work on everything. Now, if you've got a really good grasp of Blender, the material setup within Blender, which is material nodes, you could probably fix this yourself. Uh, I'm not really good enough with texturing in Blender. I'm, I'm absolutely still just learning Blender and have been for a few years now at this stage. But if you're really good with Blender, you could probably go in there and simplify some of the materials for export. Or you could, in D5, as long as you can use the eyedropper to select the actual material. So, for example, this guy right here, you can probably go in and maybe make some changes. You could adjust maybe the stretch or the scale a little bit. But generally, I found it easier to just replace the material. So if the watch material isn't working very good, we could just go in here and go search for leather. And then really just say we just download this brown one and just drag it out and apply it. And so, no, it's not going to be completely perfect, but it's still probably better than a slightly erroneous or slightly not perfect looking material or texture map. And then you can also go in here and make some changes as well to the scale. I haven't noticed a huge amount of problems with this, but it does exist. You'll also notice the glass material did not translate. And again, this is probably more due to just my lack of understanding on materials within Blender. But the current version of the D5 exporter, the D5 Blender converter, whatever it's called, does seem to recognize a lot more material types, including, I think, glass and more translucent objects. So they will translate a lot better than they used to. One other issue you might encounter is material maps just not translating. So let's take a quick look at where those are going to be stored. So let's pretend that this is our iMesh asset that we wanted to use and we downloaded, exported out to D5. And let's just hypothetically pretend that for some reason, one of the textures just didn't translate. And this has only happened to me like I think once or twice using these assets. But what's really cool about them is when you download the iMesh asset, it'll come in a zip file and then you can just extract it. And in that folder, you'll have the objects in FBX format and you'll also have all the texture maps, which is really, really cool. So what I can do is just hit I on the keyboard, hover over the part where there's no texture, just click on that and the base color map. And I'm going to load up and here is this folder. You can see this is all of my, you know, all the D5 assets, like the texture maps associated with this asset. And I just double click on this piece and there it is. So, you know, there is a slight, you know, you can run into some issues here. For example, you can kind of see the, the flame on the candle. I'm not getting my opacity map working exactly the way I would like it. But, you know, these are very small issues for the most part. Now, the one iMesh asset that I have sort of seen a lot of issues with going over to D5 is going to be beds. And my theory on that is because of the way iMesh has created the texture maps for the fabric, you do kind of run into issues. They don't seem to translate very well as it currently stands to D5. But again, if you've got a pretty good grasp of materials in Blender, you could probably simplify these materials and then just export them. The other workaround is if, for example, the pillow texture just isn't translating. You can just select the all the sort of uh, polygons that make up the pillow and just assign a brand new texture, just a random color. And then when you export that over to D5, D5 will recognize that as its own material selection and allow you to 
and really just drag out a new material, a D5 material, like a new fabric onto that section. So all in all, I will say I, I really do love these iMesh assets. Now, please note, I am not in any way affiliated with iMesh. I, I, they just seem like a really nice bunch of people. And um, their YouTube videos were really, really great when I started playing with Blender. And so I think, yeah, if I had to pick an actual library of assets, that's probably the one I would pick. I think in terms of just choice, selection, quality of the objects, quality of the modeling, quality of the materials, they're just really good. And by the way, you can go check out their website for whatever. Just take a look through. One thing I didn't get enough time to mention is materials. They have some really fantastic wood materials. Now, I love the D5 wood materials. I think they're great. But you can never have enough flooring types or sort of wall materials if you're doing this. And these are all beautifully made. They're very high quality. And when you download the asset, the folder will contain all of the files that you need. Now, I haven't messed around with the plants a huge amount. I think some of them will require you messing with the opacity maps. But all in all, these decorative elements are so, so good. Anyway, that's all I had for you guys today. I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope that if you check out iMesh, download some of those free assets and give them a whirl and see how you like it. And if you want, at least for the next 10 days, uh, at the time of recording, go ahead and maybe think about investing. It's $75 at the moment. Ah, uh, Yeah, which is really great. And I, I have not regretted this and this is i think my third year of imesh subscriptions i think they're really great so anyway um have a great rest of the day and i'll see you all in the next video cheers